it has occurred to me that I got a bunch of people that are subscribed to this channel that maybe don't know what it is that I'm doing, who I am, why I'm doing this, and what I hope to get out of this channel. It's great that I got a whole bunch of people that are watching, but I want to make sure that they know what they can use these videos for and what they can expect from the channel moving forward. So I wanted to make an instructional video to kind of explain to people what it is that I'm doing and why and what they can expect and, and all that good stuff and just kind of give a background to how we got to where we are. But if you're active on Reddit or Discord or any of those places, you've probably heard me explain this story before and kind of explain the whole shtick altogether. So for those people that have already heard the story and don't want to sit through it again, I'm going to clean this video game while I do it. Feel free to mute it if you already know the story. You don't have to listen to it or anything else. Um, and you can watch me clean a video game, and, and this will be a fantastic Super Nintendo cleaning video game. Would you look at this nonsense, though? I think Video Time maybe owned the... Hmm. Maybe Video Time. I don't know. Oh, probably probably video time. I'm not going to address the Sharpie on the back. That's going to be for a separate video. Um, there's a whole, I got a whole bunch of them that are going to go in, in a big series to show you guys how to do this. But like I said, if you want to know what it is that I'm doing and why, feel free to give it a listen. If you know the stories, if you've heard me tell it 8 million times, hey, feel free to just mute this, turn on Zelda and chill and hang out. So let's get started. I'm not going to walk through the steps. Um, I'm going to link the videos as kind of I see fit. The, the, Yoshi S, the Yoshi NES video, yeah, the Saving Yoshi one, shows how to address these security stickers. These are going to be a beast. Everything else should come off. The label should come off. I don't know about that one, but we'll see. So let's get into it. So for those of you who don't know, um, I am on Reddit and Discord and a bunch of other internet places under the name Eldug, E-L-D-O-U-G. Now, the reason that I bring that up is that you'll probably see some articles, some people talking about some different things. Maybe they'll reference it when they say that name. That's me. That's who they're talking about. Um, I try to get it on every single platform that I can, so it's a little easier to find. So that's my name on, let's see, Xbox, Steam, heck, everything. Xbox, Steam, Nintendo, PlayStation Network, good old games, all that stuff. So you can find me on there. One of the things that I really wanted to be was very accessible. So I will start... From the beginning, it's a very good place to start. Years and years and years and years ago, I worked for KB Toys, actually. Which I don't know if people know this story. But I worked for KB Toys at a time where KB Toys was closing. And I got hired on to be... Um, the store manager while the store was closing out, which is a very interesting kind of position to have. Um, but at that time in the store, in the mall that I worked at, we had a KB Toys, we had an EB Games, and we had a Babbage's. And the Babbage's ended up closing and the EB Games got taken over by GameStop, which I actually did that later on. And the KB Toys closed. When I was at KB Toys, though, I had a lot of people that would come in because they liked the atmosphere of the video games there. And I realized that I really actually did like working at a video game store. I, the whole the camaraderie and everything, I really, really liked that. But, of course, my store was closing. So, fast forward a couple years, I went to college. And then when I got out of college and I kind of needed a, a part-time job where I could do stuff during the evening and then work at this part-time job during the day, I applied to GameStop. 
and I got hired at GameStop right down the road from the KB Toys that I used to run. And what's funny is when I applied for the KB to- for the GameStop position, they said, um, "Oh, you have to interview with our DM." And I said, "Okay." Come to find out, the DM was the same DM that had hired me for KB Toys. Go figure. So worked at GameStop, and at GameStop was where I kind of learned a lot of this. So back in the ga- back in the day, GameStop used to have a um, internal intranet system on their computers, where they had like articles and things. And they would, you know, show people how to do things like here's how you t- test a system, here's how you do this, that, and the other, um, little things like that. And I was working there right after the Super Nintendo or the Super Nintendo. This is Super Nintendo. Right after the Xbox 360 came out, and we were getting a ton of Red Ring games in or Red Ring consoles in. It's actually really hard to tell a story and clean at the same time. Probably why my videos are like 45 minutes long. We were getting a lot of Xbox 360s in that had been red ringed. And we were getting in just a lot of different consoles with a lot of different problems. And one of the things that I really started to take to was cleaning up old games. Whether it be, you know, a used game that was sitting around there or a game that someone else bought for a friend and they, you know, they were getting them a used game or something. That's a big thing for me is that I want to make sure that people are getting the nicest and cleanest games that they possibly can. So I'm jumping around a little bit, but, um, at the store that I worked at, there was a good diversity of customers where we had we had a lot of customers that would come in that wanted the old stuff and we had a lot of customers that came in that maybe couldn't afford the brand new stuff but i've always kept the same logic that every video game that's out there every video gamer that owns a video game Chances are pretty good that their first video game was a gift. My first video game console was a gift from my dad. Most people's first video game console is something that was given to them at some point. So you never really know when a game is going to be someone's first game. It's going to be the gateway kind of into this magical... Oh, convenient. That it's going to be the first gateway drug into this magical world that so many of us enjoy. And we would get people that would come in and they would say, well, I can only afford, you know, this kind of game. Or I can only afford, you know, a single PlayStation 2 game or something. It's a gift for my kid. And I got really into wanting to make sure that even if it was, you know, just a PlayStation 2 game or something. Or even if it was just a... You know, whatever the gesta was, that it was still something worth gifting to someone. So I spent a lot of time messing around with a lot of different ways to clean things. And as time went on, and as I kept working at the old GameStop, we started to get more and more people from different stores. As GameStop was buying out all the different game stores all around. Everyone knows this story. As GameStop was buying up the Game Crazies and the EB Games and the Funko Lands, and we even had some folks from Circuit City that would come over. As we were buying all of those up, what we were getting were a lot of older gamers that had been around for the Babbage's and Software Etc. days. And they knew, you know, how to how to do a lot of this and they knew how to resurface games and they knew how to, you know, clean up old consoles and stuff. 
And I, I just took to that so much because that to me was just so interesting that you could take an old console or something. And it was, I mean, this was like, you want to talk about dumpster divers. That, that was these guys is that these guys were, you know, very much the pinnacle of just dumpster diving where they would go out and they would, you know, find old consoles and stuff and, and fix them up and sell them and flip them and keep them. And I mean, just all that good stuff. And so I tried to learn as much as I could from them about all the different techniques. Now, they didn't have as many comprehensive techniques as there are floating around nowadays, but there were a lot of basics. One of the things that GameStop had was a compound called Disc Fixer. And Disc Fixer... I think I've showed a picture of it before, but um, this fixer, this fixer is actually chemically the same as Novus, Novus 2, the stuff I like a lot. I didn't know about Novus. I didn't know what it was back in the day. Um, I just knew that I really liked Disc Fixer and I liked what it did for discs. So it got to the point where we were getting Xbox 360 games that would come in and they would have the laser burns on them. So they would have the circle scratch. And I had never really messed with a circle scratched disc before. But I had, you know, I had a handful of different ways to remove stickers and, and get off residue and everything. A lot of it was isopropyl alcohol and a lot of it was goo gone. I wasn't using the heptane yet. Um, and I, and I knew kind of the basics, but beyond that, it wasn't like, it wasn't like we're into right now where it's, you know, a pseudoscience basically. But I wanted to learn and I wanted to understand better what was going on and, and what was happening at that same time. The GameStop that I was working at was being asked to put stickers on cover art. And so we were putting stickers on cover art. And just every time we had to do it, and we had to. We had, we had regional managers and we had district managers that would come in and they would check. And if you didn't have stickers on your stupid cover arts, boy, they would throw a fit. Because that's what corporate wanted. Okay. So just watching us, and, and there were a lot of times where we wouldn't. I uh, There were a lot of times I would buy games. You know, you would get in a an RPG or something on the PlayStation 2, and you're like, I can't put a sticker on this. And so I would snatch it up and buy it before it could even go on the shelf. And a lot of times I was buying duplicates of things that I already owned just because I didn't want it to get stickers put on it. So I would buy up duplicates of things that I already own and then find a game store that had some decency that wouldn't put stickers on the cover art. So, still some residue. So the big thing for me is that I made a point to try to clean up every single game that comes across my bench. But... Now we're kind of getting into the, the philosophy behind what I do. So in these videos, you're going to see that I use a handful of different chemicals, but it's not like a crazy amount of anything. I feel like I rely on heptane too much. I know that heptane works really well. Heptane doesn't shadow polyethylene sleeves as much as like isopropyl alcohol does or Gugon does. But I really want to get away from that dependency on using chemicals to clean. So what I'm actually doing with all of these videos is that I'm actually working on a guide and a repository. My goal is to have a data repository 
of every single cleaning method in existence. Okay? So if you want to see, you know, if you want to see how to clean a PlayStation 2 case with Goo Gone, okay, there will be a video of that. If you want to see how to clean, you know, a sticker with citrus oil or eucalyptus oil, there will be a video on that. I, I have my preferred methods and I have things that I prefer to do and things that I prefer to use. But that doesn't mean that that's the, the end-all be-all, okay? So that, that doesn't mean that, like, it's my way or the highway kind of thing. Because like I said, I used to use Goo Gone all the time. When I started to use Goo Gone and I stopped using isopropyl alcohol, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I said, oh, my gosh, I figured out something. And then I started to look into what... Goo Gone was doing the plastics, and then I was like, oh, okay. But I'm not saying don't use Goo Gone. What I'm saying is that Goo Gone works in ways that are a little bit different. I have Goo Gone cleaning videos on my channel because it's still a viable way of cleaning things. What I'm using right now isn't Goo Gone. I know a lot of people think that it's Goo Gone, but it's actually Goof Off, which is not a knockoff Goo Gone, um, and it's got a different chemical composition than Goo Gone. Okay. I will get into all of that in the video. But so what you see when you look at my videos is that every single video has to pass a couple of different criteria. Every single method represents a, um, is represented by a video. And every single method has to pass a certain level of criteria before it gets turned into a video. Okay, so what does that mean? If I show you a video of something, so if I show you the technique that I'm showing you right now, okay, the technique that I'm showing you right now has been tested by me and other people no less than 10 times. And in those 10 times, they had at least seven successes. Okay. That is the basic expected requirement for any method to be made into a video is that it has to be replicable 70% of the time success. Okay. So every single video that you see, I and other people have done that same method with a degree of success. If you hear that and you go, oh man, I want to be one of those test subjects, let me know, okay? I have a handful of people that test things for me, but I always like getting more and more people to come in and help test because I feel like expanding that user base and really getting a good understanding of what people do and don't do is really going to be the success. The guide is going to be the same way where the guide is going to have, you know, a method for everything. If you have a, a scratched GameCube disc, there's going to be a video on that. There's going to be a tutorial on that, a walkthrough on that. And it's going to be something that you know I have done it and other people have done it as well. As I've been posting videos and pictures on Discord and Reddit of different cleaning techniques and different before and afters, not all of those are mine. Some of those are from the tests where people use my method. So I sit down and I write out, do this, then do this, then do this, then use this, then do this. And I walk people through it too. But a lot of times those pictures of the before and afters that you see are actually someone else doing it. And I think there's a good benefit to that because you're seeing that Anyone can do these things. When I make these videos, it, this is not me saying, do it my way. If you watch a video and you say, man, it didn't work for me, I want to know why. And I want to know what is preventing you from having success because my first instinct is that, oh my gosh, I did something wrong or I, you know, I explained it weird or something or maybe there's a different way I can explain it. One of the best examples is before when I was making videos 
and I would talk about how much pressure you need to apply. I would say, oh, it's like medium pressure. Oh, it's like light pressure. And then I made a video where I said, it's pressure like you have to hit accept again on a credit card machine. And I got so much positive feedback from people that said, oh my gosh, that is the best way to describe the amount of pressure you need to apply on something. I said, okay, cool, I'll start doing that. Because I want you to be able to use these videos. Every single video that is out there, I've said this in comments a bunch, I say this on, on Discord all the time, every single one of those videos that's out there, my videos are long, okay? And you're not gonna see the, okay, there's nothing wrong with the videos where people you know, it's like ASMR and it's just me being like, there's nothing wrong with those videos. I watch all of them. Trust me, I watch all of them. I watch all of them. But as I'm watching all of them, I'm sitting there thinking, well, what's, well, what is he using there? Well, why is he using this? And sometimes you'll get subtitles or captions that'll say, you know, I'm using this for this. And I just never feel like I really get a good understanding of why you're doing it a certain way. If there's anything in any of my videos that you see and you're like, why does he do this? Ask me. Totally ask me because I'll tell you because I'll, I'll give you the background of how we got to whatever technique I'm using right now, what else will work, what won't work. I'm working on a list of international chemicals, components, ingredients, accessories, everything else for people in other countries to use. Um, if you're listening to this or watching this and you are in another country and you want to help out with that, I'm always down to have people help me out with that too. It really is just a matter of letting me know kind of what's available in your store. I keep my tools fairly light because you know, every single video, someone assumes that you have a, a bucket full of Salon 40 hydrogen peroxide and, you know, UV lights and everything. People maybe don't have all that. Like, settle down a little bit, you know? So I try to keep everything simple. When I started to make these videos, my goal was to make it so that every single thing that you saw me use was sourced from Amazon. And the reason for that is that it was the beginning of COVID and people were starting to get into video games. New people were starting to get into video games. And I wanted to be able to create a resource for these new people to be able to buy old games and clean them up and not have to spend a small fortune to get them. So every single thing that you see on my videos, unless I specifically notate it, every single thing that you see on my videos is something that's available from Amazon. Now that's good and that's bad because I have a lot of really great tools that you can't get from Amazon that I can't necessarily show in videos. I will, you know, at some point I'll, I'll show a lot of those videos to get an idea of what some other tools are out there. But for the most part, you're just not really gonna see too many non Amazon based tools. But that's because I want people to feel like they can excessively get into cleaning and curating their collection. So that takes us to the cleaning and curating of a collection. Not only do I show people how to clean up a collection, okay, that's, that's always a big thing for me is just how to clean video games, how to make them look nice, how to make them look good and everything else. I also help people curate and mitigate their own personal collection. What does that mean? I will sit down with you or anyone. I sit down with game stores. I sit down with individual people. And we just talk about your game storage situation. 
If you are on, got to think of all the different channels. If you are on the Video Game Preservation Collective, I am on there. And I'm on there as basically a technical advisor to help people when they have discs that don't work, when they have questions about storage solutions, that kind of thing. All that good stuff. But, as a handful of people have pointed out, a lot of my methods are kind of extreme. I have three temperature gauges and humidity sensors in my basement game room. And I have probably, I wanna say six total in the house. I have another one in the library, another one in the basement. I got a lot of them and I watch them regularly and I get Bluetooth updates from my humidity sensors that tell me what the current temperature and humidity is in those spaces so that I can maintain and monitor them to make sure that everyone is comfortable and in a nice, clean environment. That's kind of extreme. And I know that. Well aware, you know. But when you're watching my videos, I want you to see the extreme of something and then work with you on how to dial it back. If your games are kept in a storage bin in the attic, that's okay. You know, we can work with figuring out what is the best solution for that. I don't want you to think that just because you don't have temperature and humidity regulated storage for your video games, that's bad. You know, I'm realistic about this stuff. And I want people to feel confident in what it is that they're doing. But I also understand that life is kind of life. So you can't always just, oh, I'm going to put this in the humidity room and it's going to be great. I get that. Totally understand that. So when you see me say something like, oh, this is the relative humidity that you should have in your room, or this is the average temperature, you should have active airflow. Oh my gosh, you got to have UV filtration on the windows, blah, blah, blah. That's the extremes. That is when I am looking to the long-term future of video game preservation mitigation of physical media. There are a lot of really fantastic people out there. Like I said, the Video Game Preservation Collective, uh, Hit Save, all those guys are doing fantastic stuff where they are preserving tons of things, and it's fantastic. But one of the things that I feel maybe doesn't get viewed enough, maybe doesn't get spoken about enough, is the mitigation, the weird mitigation. My cat's agreeing with me. The weird mitigation where, you know, what happens to games that have stickers on them in the long run? Look at that. Man, this is going to be a pain. What happens to stickers that have, or video games that have stickers on them in the long run? You know, what happens to game labels where they're left in a warm climate and no one addresses the decomposition of the organic material. And so you'll see me go on about a lot of that stuff and I don't want anyone to get too ugh, worked up about it because it's, it's for a, I don't want to say it's for a different crowd because that sounds really elitist. Um, but there are a group of people out there who are looking at long-term solutions for a lot of this stuff. And I'm trying to think of a good example. Disc rot. Disc rot is a perfect example. You will see very few videos from me about disc rot. I'm working on a disc rot tutorial video. 
It doesn't show you how to mitigate it. It doesn't show you how to fix it. It just shows you examples of what it is and what it is not, okay? Disc rot is an interesting one. Disc rot is not something the average game collector should be worried about. I know there's there's tons and tons of video game videos out there where they're like, disc rot's ruining every collection. Buy now. Jump off a bridge. Everything's terrible. Disc rot's a natural occurrence, okay? Disc rot is something that is being looked at by a handful of weirdos that are trying to figure out is there a way to mitigate it. Right now, sitting right behind me in a cabinet is a prime example of disc rot, but it's sealed. Next to it is an open game, same game, produced at the same time, that is not sealed. It does not show the signs of disc rot, but it should. And next to those two, is a sealed and graded version of that same game that should also be showing signs of disc rot, but is not showing signs of disc rot as far as I can tell, but it's sealed and graded, so as far as I can tell, it's kind of limited. That's the kind of stuff that I'm focused on, and that's the kind of nonsense stuff that Honestly, you're better off not really losing too much sleep about it. Because at its current stage, you can't really do much about it. Or can you? Well, maybe. But that's something that a lot of us are looking into to see what possible solutions there are. So you hear me talk about it sometime, um, and it's usually with other preservationists as more of a scientific, hypothetical kind of thing. But that's a big part of what I do kind of on the side is, is examining and looking at the long-term delamination and decay of stickers on labels. You know, and, and what does that do over time? And what is that going to do to the label itself? And, and that kind of stuff, to me, I, I just think is fascinating. It's, it's the act of plaque. It's the, you know, if you leave a sticker on forever, what happens to it? That kind of thing. Which leads me to my next point. I actually did write a script for this. Look at me. Which leads me to my next point. And my next point is, what do I do? Specifically in these videos. I clean games. Like I said, I'm, I'm making a guide. I'm making a data repository. Um, as you see these videos, these videos are all tested methods, so you can be sure that they will work, okay? And there's no, should be, no doubt that these methods all work. You should feel confident and comfortable in doing them. I will tell you when it's something that is potentially harmful to your item. Most of the time, I won't even show those, though. But... I try, I uh, tore right away, I try to um, do as little impact as possible on the item that I'm working on. So I'll remove any sticker that I can within reason, okay? If the sticker was there originally, the sticker will probably stay. If the sticker was not there originally, I will probably try to get rid of the sticker. I want every game that I clean to look like it's been just hanging around for the last however many years, okay? I don't want it to look picture perfect. I don't want it to be a 10 out of 10. Oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful thing ever. I want it to look like it's been sitting comfortably on someone's shelf this whole time. 
and that's it. And that's really all I want. Ah, uh, Tor. And that's really all I want, is that I want the game to look good, but to show its age. So, you're going to get some label damage. You're going to get some fading. You're going to get some color transference. That's just how a lot of these games are. A lot of these games are very old. So, of course... They're going to look very old. That's just how it works. I try to remove all stickers and clean it up as best I can without impacting the item. Ugh. I say that as I'm ruining a label. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, on these older ones, this just happens, you know. But I, I have to have reasonable expectations, and I have to ha be realistic about what I can and can't remove. And if you're looking at something and you're saying, you know, I don't know if that's going to remove, I don't know if that's going to come off. You know, you have to make a decision of if it's worth it. You know, is it worth it to potentially damage the item to get the sticker off? I think I've showed it in a couple of videos, but Heptane actually strips off ink. So is it worth it in the long run to strip off ink on something? Maybe not. Man, that's frustrating. I also have really high expectations. I have really high expectations and really high standards for what I want to see out of what it is that I'm cleaning. I'm not necessarily expecting everyone else to feel that same way, but I'm, I'm pushing for something more than just passable. You know, I'm pushing for better than average. And I, I want that from anything that I clean. Mm. A lot of the label damage up there. It's still sticky, though. That's the frustrating part, is that it should, by all means, be coming up. But these security stickers, there was a little tear in it. What you're seeing is the underside, which is annoying. Um, at any rate... It's about being realistic. It's about learning. It's about understanding your capabilities, what you can and can't do, um, and working with it. Oh, I missed a side. And I think that's, that's a big, big part of it is I want to give people the tools to feel confident to clean up their own collection, okay? I'm not sitting here trying to say like, you know, I am the end all be all expert in cleaning, I'm not. I don't think anyone is. I think everyone has their own preferred methods and, you know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but I just wanna give people the tools to be successful. So, that being said, I got way too much into this cleaning. <laughs> Should have picked something easy. So that being said, 
that's what you can expect from this channel, is that I will give you tutorial videos on everything, okay? I am accessible, where if you have a question about something and you want to know how best to clean something or what I would do or, you know, if there's a recommendation or something, hit me up. If there's a video that you would like to see that you haven't seen yet, hit me up. And that'll be something that I'll add to it. I'm not, and I keep saying this over and over again, I'm not trying to get the likes and the views and the subscribes and everything else. Mostly because once I get my little data repository all up and running, a lot of these videos are going to just come off. And I'm going to put them on my little channel. You guys will be able to watch it. Look at that. Top looks terrible. I'll still work on that a little bit. A um, little bit more work on the back. So, I am a video gamer at heart. Okay, I have way too many video games. And I still buy way too many video games. And I love video games. I really do. I've always loved them. I will continue to love them. One of the things that I want to be able to offer to people is the opportunity for them to feel empowered to be able to clean their own games in their own collection. Even if it's something simple, even if it's just, well, I want to I wanna take a sticker off my cover. I can't tell you how many people have sent me messages after the cover art videos and said, oh my gosh, I tried this and it worked. That's awesome. That is what I want to hear is that people try it and it works for them. Same thing with stickers on DVD cases. I got so many versions of that video that's going to come out, 8 million different kinds of here's how you take stickers off of cover arts and here's how you take stickers off this, that, and the other, everything. There's, you're going to have so many of them be coming out of the woodwork. So look forward to those things. If you want to see longer rambling explanations about polymers, about the structure of Super Nintendo cases, the structure of any plastic, why heptane works, anything else like that. All of that is on Discord. I will eventually transport that over to something a little more manageable that people can um, read through. So I have spent a number of years in additive manufacturing, 3D printing, and material science. It's actually my day job. So being able to explain why heptane works on a cart and why alcohol is not a good thing to use on a cart, I can give you the science answer for that. Isn't that neat? If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, wonderings, or anything else, leave me comments. Um, post it in, in wherever. I'm, like I said at the beginning, I'm L Doug, E L D O U G, on everything under the sun. I mean, if it's a social media thing, I'm on that either as myself or as Restore and Replay, which is the name of the channel, just to sound a little bit fancier. Fun story about how I got my screen name before we go. And then we'll go. Also, I broke my little my little box cutter, so I gotta fix that too. Back in the day, there were a group of us that used to play tons and tons and tons of Ages of Empire. And us being goofy little kids back in the late 90s, whatever, we were reading about El Cid, the Conqueror. And so we decided that all of us were going to have L names when we had screen names for different things, for Battle.net and EverQuest and whatever. And so there was El Chris and there was L. It was El Chris, El Dan, El... Brian and El Doug, there were a couple others. Um, and that, for whatever reason, for me, just kind of stuck. 
where I said, okay, that's basically just what I'll keep having. So I got it on everything. I got it on EverQuest. I got it on World of Warcraft. And it stuck, and it just kind of became a thing where it was a little easy to remember. Um, so that's the name on Discord. Like I said, add me on Xbox, add me on PlayStation, Steam, whatever else you want. Um, most of the time I'm I'm gaming, or most of the time I'm cleaning, not gaming. But I'm always down to help people clean up their collections. Pretty good, right? Goof off. Adhesive gunk remover gel. Not... Um, it has alcohol. It doesn't have petroleum glycol, which I think makes it work a little bit faster. I always ramble at the end of these videos. So like I said, that's what you can expect from Restore and Replay for now and, and moving forward. All of my playlists will explain exactly what it is. There's a heptane playlist. If you want to use heptane, if you can't get heptane, there's a Gugon playlist. There's an alcohol playlist. There's all kinds of different playlists that you might want or need. Sorry this video ran kind of long. I just wanted to give you guys an understanding of who I am and, and why I'm doing what I do. Like I said, ultimately, at the end of the day, if I can clean a game and bring it back to as good of condition as it should be historically, that's great. That's all I really want. Can I make this game look... 1991. Can I make this game look like it's been sitting... Nice and comfortable on a shelf since 1991. That is what I want to do. We're not going for perfection here. We're going for realistic historical preservation. Um, and that's really the goal. I'll get into the preservation stuff and the science behind all of that in another video. Just so people can understand. I've, I've worked with um, preservationists, with document archivists, different people like that. Um, and we'll get into all of that in another video. I ramble at the end of a lot of these videos. And I know that until next time... I'm going to take this off. You can actually already see that it started to fade a little bit on this side. I'm going to take this off for another video. And then at some point I'll clean up these corners. Maybe if I have to do another long explanation video. Thanks for watching. I am on Instagram, TikTok, because you have to be. YouTube, Twitter, Discord, Reddit, all of those places. Look forward to an R game cleaning pretty soon. There'll be a subreddit on Reddit where we'll have cleaning articles that is underway. That would be reddit.com r slash game cleaning. So until then, um, check me out wherever the internet exists. If you are a GameEye user and if you open up GameEye, chances are I have a cleaning article on that front page that'll bring you to all of my stuff as well. Until next time, guys, thanks, and I'm going to keep cleaning. See ya.